Well, welcome everyone joining us at all of our campuses today and all of you joining us online today as well. Well, this is in tradition known as Palm Sunday. It was the Sunday that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a, a donkey with his disciples and the people greeted him with palm branches and praise and honor as they would as a conquering king coming into uh, the city. But this scene was so different when Jesus came because he didn't come in a chariot pulled by champion horses as a conquering kings would come with their generals and all the spoils of their conquest in display. No, Jesus came humbly on the back of a donkey with his disciples, these fishermen from Galilee. It was actually the fulfillment of the scriptures in Zechariah, when Zechariah wrote in Zechariah 9, 9, he said, rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king is come to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fold of a donkey. I imagine the disciples were kind of caught up that day in the wonder of it all. As the crowds were cheering, all the adoration that was going on, but I believe that Jesus was looking beyond the adorations of the crowd to his destiny on Golgotha, the place of the skull, the place of the cross, the place of his suffering. And I can't help but believe that in that moment with the adorations of, of the crowd, in Jesus' mind, he was reviewing probably the words of the old prophet Isaiah because the old prophet had prophesied about what Christ would face when he came into Jerusalem on that day. And the word of God reads in Isaiah 53, yet it was our weaknesses that he carried it was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But no, he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be made whole and he was whipped so that we could be healed. And all of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Isn't it amazing that hundreds of years before the actual event, the old prophet Isaiah already had a glimpse into the suffering of the Messiah would go through for the sins of all mankind. None of us can imagine the weight that was upon Christ that day as he came in to the holy city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday because he knew what was waiting for him. There was the accusations that were false. There was the mock trial against him. Then he was beaten beyond recognition to the very point of death and then made to endure the carrying of the cross up the Via Della Rosa, the way of the cross up to Golgotha, a place known for the punishment of those sinners. And there, falsely accused, falsely mocked, falsely tried, he's hung between two thieves on the cross to die for us. We, we in our modern world can't get our mind around this. We, it's hard for us to understand what really took place at the cross. I, I love the Apostle Paul who is a brilliant scholar and also we know him as one of the greatest apostles and teachers of God's word throughout the world. He wrote over half of our New Testament that we have. 13 of our 26 books were written by the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul gives us insight to this event, maybe like none other, about what really happened when Christ was nailed to the cross. Because we must understand as his followers today that the significance 
of what he did in taking our place on the cross, paying the penalty for our sins on the cross. And the Apostle Paul writes to the church at Colossae in the book of Colossians, and he writes these words. You were dead because of your sins, and because of your sinful nature was just not yet cut away, then God made you alive with Christ. We were dead in our sins, and God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away, note this, nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities and he shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Wow. I was reading through this and God just once again reminded me of what was nailed to the cross on my behalf and on your behalf. I was out Golgotha in 1983. I'd made my way up the Villa de la Rosa, the way, the pathway through the ancient city. They believed that Jesus carried the cross. And then I went to the place that they crucified him. And I was there with my family and I remember going upstairs in, in, the, in the church of the Holy Sepulchre where they have built this massive church over Golgotha. And I made my way up and I was sitting there observing pilgrims coming from all over the world to honor this sacred place, to light a candle of prayer, to kneel and even under an altar and they could slip their hand in and touch the granite of Golgotha. And as I observed it all and I was watching this going on, suddenly I had a moment of an encounter myself that I was not expecting. It's like God parted the veil and I, I had a glimpse into the depth of what took place on the cross for me. Now I've been singing songs about the cross my whole life. I was raised in the church, gave my heart to Christ when I was a young man. But that day I had a glimpse into the depth like I'd never realized before. And it humbled me to the point that I could not leave that place for hours. I sat there and just wept and prayed and tried to thank God for the sacrifice for my sins. There are four things I see that jump out to me that were nailed to the cross on our behalf with Christ. And that's what I wanna share with you today. And the first thing that I noted, and I, uh, because in just a little bit in the service, we're gonna have an opportunity to come and nail our sins to the cross, our cares, our burdens, our brokenness. We're gonna have an opportunity to come. Any sickness, any disease, any challenges we're facing today, we must understand the power of when they are nailed to the cross. We're gonna be able to bring those to the cross today. But the first thing that struck me when I, I read Paul's record, he says, the record of all of our charges against us were nailed to the cross. We have been forgiven. Can you imagine that? As I, I'm writing on this card right now, all my sins. Praise God, I don't have to spell them all out. I can just make it plural. All my sins. And we must recognize that Jesus, when he was nailed to the cross, he took our sins, my sins. And the record of my sins were nailed here. You know what that means? 
I'm no longer held captive by my past. The enemy of our souls can no longer blackmail us with our past. Because we have been forgiven of our past. The record has been wiped clean, hallelujah. As far as for the east is from the west. And it says that God will remember them no more. What a freedom. Paul writes in the book of Corinthians, he says, now that we are in Christ, all the old has passed and gone away, and behold, all things have become new. We are new in Christ. When Christ went to the cross and died for our sins, it nailed the record of our sins to the cross, and we are free of that. And now we can walk in the freedom of our salvation in Christ. And I know you're just like me. There are things of our past that continually try to come up and haunt us. And every time they do, we must rebuke them and point it all back to the cross. I have been forgiven. And by the way, isn't it wonderful that God has chosen to wipe it out so there is no more remembrance of it in heaven? So if there's no remembrance in heaven, why are we gonna let hell's remembrance bother us? Amen? We've been set free. We've been set free. Now with that, with that comes a great thing. In the book of Romans, it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So when Christ was nailed to the cross, not only was the record of my sins forgiven and canceled, but guess what, my debt, the wage of my sin, have now been canceled. Praise God, I am not a victim of sin any longer and its wage. I have been forgiven. I have been forgiven. Praise God. I'm no longer bound by the penalty of sin. I am free. Oh my goodness. What a, how do you describe that? The freedom we have in Christ. We have no longer have to pay that penalty. And you know what else? When Christ was nailed to the cross, he not only nailed the record of my sins and he paid the price of my sins and so I can be forgiven and now have eternal life, but he did something else that was great. He took the burden of my sin was lifted. Oh, the burden of sins are horrible. The guilt, the shame, the condemnation, the anxiety, the struggle, it's horrible. It's a horrible weight. We used to sing a little song in the church I grew up in. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. I thought you had applauded that. I thought that was pretty good. I... <laughs> Actually, I, I stayed on pitch, Donna. Hallelujah. So I'm writing down all the burdens of my sin, all the anxiety, all the condemnation, all the guilt, all the shame. It was all nailed to the cross when Christ was nailed to the cross.
Praise God, I don't have to live with those burdens anymore. That stuff is off of me. Now I can have the peace and the joy of the Lord, the life that God intended for me. Oh, and this is a big one. Paul writes that when Christ was nailed to the cross, he disarmed all spiritual authorities and made a public spectacle of them in his victory on the cross. Praise God, when he was nailed to the cross, the power of sin was broken and defeated in our lives. The enemy of our soul was defeated. When Jesus cried out on the cross, it is finished. It was not a statement of defeat, it was a statement of victory. I have completed God's master plan of salvation. Now all enemies of the cross have been defeated. And we have been set free. And we have been given life. Praise God, the power of sin over my life. I'm writing the power of sin over me is broken. Praise God, I'm no longer a slave to it. I'm no longer a slave to it. I no longer have to yield to it. I, I have victory through Christ. Through Christ, I can do all things because he strengthens me. Praise God. Trying to find the right place to nail this. I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. I can do all things through Christ who loves me. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. I am an overcomer. Why? Because of Christ on the cross. Wow. The record of my sins have been canceled. The wages of my sin have been paid, so now that I don't have to pay that penalty, and by the way, we would never be able to pay the penalty ourselves. We can't be good enough, religious enough, we can't achieve forgiveness and cleansing of our sins on our own. It's only by the grace and mercy of God that they can happen. My burdens have been lifted when he broke the power of sin over my life and defeated the enemy of my life, I can now walk in that freedom. So when you come to the cross today, I want you to know this. You will find forgiveness of your sins. You will find the gift of eternal life because we don't have to pay the wage of sin. We have eternal life. You will find in that also when the burdens of your sin were nailed to the cross, then the life that God intended for you, a life of peace, a life of joy, a life of abundance is there for you to experience now. We don't have to carry the weight of the world on us any longer. It was lifted at Calvary. And when you come to the cross, you will discover an empowered life because you have now been empowered to live victoriously in this life. In your relationships, in your life, in everything, God wants you to live empowered to live victoriously. The abundant life that God has called for you to live. Because at Calvary, you will be immersed in the love of God. And that love will transform you. So in just a moment, our campus pastors are gonna come on all of our campuses and they're gonna lead you through this holy expression of what Christ has done for each of us personally at the cross. And we gave you those little 
black cards and pencils when you came in to all of our campuses today. And I want you to take a moment to reflect and write down on those cards what you want to nail to the cross today. For you, if you've never fully surrendered your life to Christ, what a greater day than today to simply say, all my sins. And you bring them and nail them to the cross and pray and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. I bring them to you today and I leave them at the cross. The Word of God says that God will come in by His Spirit and do a miraculous work in you, a transformational work from the inside out. Come and nail your sins to the cross. Some of us are, we've given our lives to Christ, but we have some habitual things that we're dealing with in our lives that we know are not pleasing to God. Let's be bold enough to write those down and bring them to the cross and nail them there and leave them there. If you're battling with any form of addiction, bring it to the cross, speak it on your note and nail it there and leave it there for the power of God to break the curse of that. If there's a brokenness in your relationships, bring them here. If the past pain, bring it here. Nail it to the cross. Sometimes it helps us to really identify it. Call it out by name as we write it on our cards and bring it to the cross of Christ and nail it there today. I don't know, it may be in a brokenness in relationships. I don't know what it would be, but God knows. And we have this opportunity right now to proclaim by faith the victory that God has ordained for us on the cross. He canceled the record of our sins. He paid the debt of our sins. He lifted the burden of our sin. And he broke the power of sin over our lives. He did those things at the cross for you and for me. Let us pray and prepare our hearts to come to the cross. Father, in heaven. I pray for this holy moment as we recognize and express the impact of the cross on each of our lives that brought salvation and life to us, life abundant and life eternal through the forgiveness of our sins because Jesus, the Passover lamb, is the only one who could take away our sins by his shed blood on the cross of Calvary. Now, as we prepare to come, I pray your Holy Spirit will guide us and lead us, and may there be victory found at the cross. Amen. Amen. Here at the Gardens campus, if you didn't receive a black paper and a pencil, if you'll just raise your hand, our team's coming around now and they'll make sure that you get that today. Those of you that are worshiping with us at Christ Fellowship everywhere, we want you to participate in this moment to the best of your ability as well. And so we encourage you to find something to write on today and our hosts are gonna be with you in just a moment. And they're gonna have the opportunity to pray on whatever it is that you are writing on your paper today as you surrender it to the cross of Jesus Christ. This is what we call the beautiful exchange. That we can exchange all of our past, all of our sin and all of our shame for the grace and the love of Jesus. And I don't know about you, but every time I hear a teaching like that, and every time I hear those hammers hit the nails, I'm brought to that moment, that moment where Jesus willingly outstretched his arms on that cross for me and for you. And it's in this posture today of outstretched arms, this image of Jesus, that I so love to be reminded of. Because I think that some people, they have the, the wrong image of the posture of Jesus. Some people may view Jesus like this, arms crossed and frustrated at them, or finger pointed at them and 
their sin and their, their wrongdoing and their wickedness and their addiction and their hurt and their habit and their hang up. But this is not the posture of Jesus. And this, this finger pointing is not the posture of Jesus. No, the posture of Jesus is arms wide open and embracing an openness and a welcome to the great exchange. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith and this is not of yourself so that no one could boast, but it is the free gift of God. And so coach so beautifully walked us through what we may write on our cards today. And I wanna give you some time in your seats to begin writing some of those sins that you need forgiveness from. Maybe today it's not just sin, but you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to step into the eternal life that he paid for. You're gonna write your own name on that card today. Or maybe there's not an area that has you tripped up in sin or shame, but maybe it's an area in your life that you truly need lifted. You need to experience the, the peace and the rest and the joy that only Christ can bring. So you're gonna write that worry or that anxiety or that fear on that card today. Or maybe today too, your card is the opposite of all these things. Your card is a card of thanksgiving and praise and gratitude. Whatever you write on your card today, this is a moment of worship. And our team is gonna be singing over us here in just a moment. And so some logistics for us today. We don't want you to feel forced in any of this. We want this to, to flow. And so that's why we have these four center aisles that you can make your way down to these crosses today. We ask that you exit out against the walls towards the back. There's even some crosses this year in the back of the room. For those of you that are in the back or maybe you don't feel comfortable coming all the way down, you could visit those crosses in the back. But we want you to slow this moment down. We want the team to worship over you. And we want you to experience today afresh and the new, the great exchange. Your sin for his forgiveness your shame for his grace, your worry for his peace. I'm gonna pray for us and our team will get in place to help you. Let's pray. Jesus, we're so grateful that you willingly for the joy set before you endured the cross, despising its shame. And that you reign now seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven in a place of victory. And so for us today, the cross is not a sign of defeat, but a sign of victory. And we know today that just as we pray and as we worship, that you are our great intercessor, that you are our great prayer warrior, that you are praying for us. And so we respond to your grace. We respond to your mercy. And we surrender our lives afresh and anew to you. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.